I was born on January 7, 1800, in Summerhill, New York. My name is Millard Fillmore, and my story is one of humble beginnings, political ascent, and the presidency during a time of immense change. Growing up in a modest household, I understood the value of hard work and education. I pursued my studies and eventually became a lawyer, practicing in Buffalo, New York. It was through my involvement in the legal profession that I found my passion for public service. In the 1830s, I entered the world of politics, serving in the New York State Assembly and later in the U.S. House of Representatives. My dedication to the Whig Party's principles of economic development, infrastructure improvements, and a strong national government resonated with the people, propelling me forward in my political career. In 1848, I was elected as the Vice President of the United States, serving under President Zachary Taylor. However, destiny had a different path for me. Just 16 months into our administration, President Taylor passed away, and I assumed the presidency on July 9, 1850. My presidency was marked by the pressing issue of slavery and the growing tensions between the North and the South. The Compromise of 1850, a series of legislative measures aimed at resolving the issue, was a central focus of my presidency. While the Compromise temporarily eased tensions, it failed to provide a long-term solution to the underlying conflict. During my presidency, I also prioritized economic development and the modernization of the country. I supported the construction of railroads, the expansion of the telegraph network, and the promotion of foreign trade. These initiatives aimed to stimulate economic growth and foster national unity. I understood the importance of education and worked towards the establishment of the Smithsonian Institution, which would serve as a center for scientific research and knowledge dissemination. Despite my efforts to navigate the tumultuous political landscape and address pressing issues, my presidency faced significant challenges and criticism. My decision to sign the Fugitive Slave Act, which required the return of escaped slaves to their owners, drew sharp criticism from both abolitionists and proponents of states' rights. After leaving the presidency in 1853, I retired from politics and focused on my personal and professional life, 